Okay, um, we're going to consider some integrals that have quadratic expressions in them. And the reason why we're looking at them now is that many times when you do the proper manipulations on them, they turn into a form that's amenable to being solved with a trig substitution. And here we have, for example, the integral of x divided by the square root of x squared minus 2x plus 5. And the whole trick when you face this kind of a situation is to try to do a complete the squares kind of a deal. Uh, we take this coefficient uh, of the x term here and divide it by 2. So we write it like this. x minus 1 squared. And this would be equal to x squared minus 2x plus 1. And clearly, if we added 4 to this side, that would give us x squared minus 2x plus 5. And so that's what we're going to do. So now we can rewrite the integral. And the square root sign, now we're going to have this. 4 plus x minus 1 squared dx. Okay, so here we have a constant plus a variable squared. That resembles this situation. Constant plus a variable squared. So we take our variable x minus 1 and we set that equal to the tangent of theta and we're going to actually set it equal to 2 times the tangent of theta, the square root of this number. So this square root quantity is going to become 4 plus this squared for tangent squared theta. That will equal 4. Factoring that out of there, 1 plus a tangent squared of theta to the secant squared of theta. And then we take the square root of that. So this right here now becomes 2 times the secant of theta. Okay, and we still have left x. Now well, let's see, x, that will equal 2 times the tangent of theta plus 1. So we have that covered. And what about dx? Go to here. dx will equal 2 times the secant squared of theta d theta. So it looks like all the pieces are in place. Let's put them together and see if it gives us an integral that we can solve. Here we will have x. That's 2 times the tangent of theta plus 1 times dx. That's 2 secant squared theta d theta. Take that 2 to the outside. And then down here we have 2 times the secant of theta. This doesn't look too bad. That's a 1. These are going to cancel. So we're going to have 2 put these into two integrals equal to tangent of theta times the secant of theta d theta plus the integral of the secant of theta d theta. So we started out with this integral, 
manipulated into this interval by doing a complete dispersed kind of an operation. Um, these are substitution because this is a constant plus a variable squared, so that's the relevant identity here. And then this integral is now these two integrals. Um, hopefully you remember what this is. That's the natural log of the secant of theta times the tangent of theta. And this, tangent of theta, secant of theta, and theta, this here is just the differential the secant of theta. And if we integrate that, we're going to get the secant of theta. So it equals 2 from this integral here, the secant of theta, plus the natural log secant of theta plus the tangent of theta. So once we transform this into trig integrals, we could solve those. Now we have to express these in terms of our original variable x. So we go back to our substitution here, and we see the tangent of theta equals x minus 1 divided by 2. So we know what this is. We have to get the secant of theta. So at this point it's helpful to draw the triangle. Here's theta. The sine of theta equals the side opposite divided by 2. Drawing our triangle with theta, the tangent of theta is this, which is the side opposite divided by the side adjacent. And what about this side, the hypotenuse? That will be the square root of 4 plus x minus 1 squared. But we've seen this before from here, and that's this. So let's write the hypotenuse is x squared minus 2x plus 5. Okay, and here was our answer with this and this. And this will equal 2. The secant of theta, that's the hypotenuse divided by the side adjacent. So we have the square root x squared minus 2x plus 5 divided by 2, that's the secant of theta, plus the natural log. The secant of theta is this divided by this. The tangent of theta is x minus 1 over 2. So we're going to get here square root x squared minus 2x plus 5 plus x minus 1 divided by 2. And that would be our answer. We took the thetas and we re-expressed them in terms of the variable x. These are going to cancel, obviously. So, and we have an arbitrary constant. One more thing we can do, here we have a logarithm of this divided by this. That could be the natural logarithm of this minus this, which is minus a constant, and lump that together with this constant. So let's do that real quick. This will equal, that stays the same, x squared minus 2x plus 5 plus the natural log of this, x squared minus 2x plus 5 plus x minus 1 minus the natural log of 2 plus a constant 
And we can just call this a new construct called a plus k. So, finally we can write the integral of x divided by the square root x squared minus 2x plus 5 dx will equal what's inside that original square root sign plus the natural log of that square root sign plus plus an arbitrary constant. So this here then, this is the solution to our original problem. So it's a little bit convoluted, but again, the whole thing hinges on realizing we can't solve this with a UDU substitution. It certainly doesn't resemble one of these kind of basic identities. One last thing to try, uh, see if we can do a complete the squares type operation so that this becomes this. And as soon as that happens, the whole thing really falls apart. Because now we can say, here we have a constant plus a variable squared, x minus 1 squared. That resembles this identity, constant plus a variable squared. So make the substitution here and we just follow through from there we get two um, trig integrals to evaluate this one and this one we get those quite readily and then use our substitution to draw the triangle and then convert our thetas back into the variable x so that's it for this problem um, come back and join us for some more videos and we'll see if we can solve some more problems.